Hello and welcome to this freehanding tutorial where I will show you my process that I use in order to transfer images from uh, known artworks for Warhammer, uh, for instance, or other games, onto uh, models. Um, so basically what we're talking about is how we can transfer artworks like these onto models like this. Uh, this is my Legion of Damned Knight that I painted um, and entered into Armies on Parade along with an army of Legion of the Damned models and was awarded uh, the Lore Master Award uh, the year 2020. And a lot of people have asked me how I managed to do these amazing artworks on, on the model and I'm in this uh, tutorial tutorial try, going to try to show you how I do it. So in the tutorial I will be talking about uh, the tools that you need and the prep you need to do, what techniques you need to do uh, or use in terms of painting and a little bit of hints of how to achieve them and also the obviously the process that I use in order to do uh, my freehands. So let's talk about the minis and tools first. First of all, you need to prepare your model for the freehand. And I've learned that the larger and flatter the surface is that you're going to do the freehand on, the better. And in this case, in this shield, since it's a little bit convex, uh, that adds a little bit of complexity to the freehanding work just because straight lines tend to be curved, etc. And this can cause some uh, some some visual illusions that are a little bit cumbersome at least for new painters to deal with uh, but just keeping that in mind that the flatter and the larger the surface is the better next it's essential when doing this that you use a wet palette and the reason is because you want to transfer colors from the image that you use as a reference over to the miniature and you want to be able to have all the colors available at all times and a wet palette allows you to do that. Uh, it also allows you to mix colors on the fly. So when you need a new color, you can simply just mix two colors together uh, directly and quickly transfer it over to your miniature. Um, there are plenty of tutorials online of how to build your own uh, wet palettes. In my, in my case here, it's just a simple Tupperware drawer, a uh, Tupperware box, I mean, to, and a sponge and some, some uh, baking paper, uh, I think it's called and water in there and this keeps the paint uh, nice and wet for several hours which is more than enough in order to do uh, a reasonably sized uh, freehand uh, piece on a model. Uh, the last part is uh, you need a, a, a brush with a very nice tip. I use uh, Citadel uh, artificer brushes, uh, the extra small version that you can find in your local Warhammer store, but any brush that has a very fine tip is uh, preferable. Uh, the reason is because you're going to paint all of these small little details and of course then having a small brush really helps with that. Um, then I was talking about do you need a few different techniques and these techniques you might have heard of in different YouTube videos or tutorials. They are normally called layering, glazing and stippling. And these are the same techniques that you would use uh, for painting your models. Uh, and many of you have probably heard what these different terms or heard these different terms, but you don't maybe know exactly what they are. So let me try to explain them, even though I'm an amateur in, in, in this uh, myself, but I roughly know how to do them at least. So let's start with layering. So layering is basically what it sounds like, where you put layers of paint on one another. So I usually start with a dark paint, the darkest paint that I want, and then I put layers of brighter paint on top of that and uh, when we look at it like this it just looks like a, 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 a set of parallel lines of different colors but if we zoom out a little bit and maybe squint a little bit and look in, at the screen you will notice that the, the colors sort of blend together so the more of these lines of, of, of increasing gradients that you put next to one another the, the finer uh, blend or transition you will get and this is very helpful for instance when doing non-metallic metal or uh, or some other types of gradients on your models the important part here is of course then that you make all your brush strokes uh, uh, parallel 
moving from uh, one point in, to the next so the lines are parallel to one another and here when it comes to paint ratios you can have quite a lot of paint and less water so the 80 20 rule here and um, it's not that simple different paints want more or less water but here the wet palette can help you out as well uh, but you can use more paint here than water then the next one is glazing and with glazing you start off with painting the areas to get coverage and then you want to create a blend between these two colors so in this case from the uh, dark brown to the light yellow or uh, light brown yellow and what you do there is that you take a paint and you mix it up with a lot of water and then you start making strokes from the yellow area onto the brown area and you want the paint here to be watered down heavily so that it leaves very little pigment in each stroke and the most important part to succeed with the glazing uh, is that you uh, put down your brush and confidently uh, make a stroke towards the, the area where you want to do end the transition if you go in the other way uh, when you lift your brush you will deposit a larger little blob of, of paint and that will basically look like little uh, little dots of paint so if you were to pull your brush from the dark brown area in this case onto the bright brown area you wouldn't get a nice uh, smooth transition you would rather get a transition and then a dark line of paint or, or dots of dark paint uh, but moving into the darker area will then allow you to get a nice smooth transition. The last uh, technique that uh, I, I use often is stippling. And stippling is what the little animation showed here, that you use little dots. And these little dots allow you then to, uh, like a printer basically, uh, add more dots closer to uh, in one area. And then you fade the dots out, less and less dots away from that area. We're using the same color and that when zoomed out and looking at the model from a distance will give you this uh, sort of illusion of, of um, a transition or a blend whatever you want to call it and the brush strokes that you use in this case are of course then little dots and the paint that you can use for this could be a stick a little bit thicker so the 80 20 rule here again uh, more paint than water so that's basically the, a little bit of a prep for the miniatures and the, and the tools that you will need. And then also uh, very briefly the techniques that you might want to use or in order to achieve the freehands. There are plenty of uh, excellent videos online uh, on YouTube to, to learn more about these. I could recommend uh, Trovarian, uh, for instance, Squidmore Miniatures, um, Vince Venterella and more. Um, also maniac uh, uh, etc who have nice beginner tutorials and also intermediate level tutorials of how you use these different techniques but just search for for uh, uh, layering glazing and, and stippling and you will um, get a lot of nice information that you might need in order to succeed with this so with that said, let's move on then to the process of how I do my freehands. So the first step is to obviously find an image that you want to paint. And in this case here, I've, uh, I have the Marine from the Codex, uh, the, the Space Marine Codex, and I wanted to, to paint that on an armor panel for my knight. So what I did was to find an image, put it into, get it into the computer and then the first part I do is to split it into segments. I'll get back to what I mean by this, but basically break the image down into a grid. Next, when I have my grid that I've created in the computer, I sketch that grid and the segments uh, onto, uh, together with an outline of, of the image that I want to paint onto my model. And then I block in the colors in, uh, in the sketched areas. So in this case, moving the red colors from the helmet onto the model, the blue areas of the armor to suitable places on, on, the, on the model, etc., etc. I'll get back to that in detail in a little bit. 
Next, when I've blocked in the colors, I start adding details, adding shadows and highlights to uh, certain areas and moving from um, painting in one area at a time. Starting by blocking in colors, let's say for the head or the helmet and detailing that a little bit and then moving on to the shoulder and then to the armor, etc, etc. Uh, and uh, slowly building up uh, the, the complete image. And I keep repeating these steps over and over until I've covered the entire canvas, so to speak, so to speak, the area where I want my free hand to be on the model. And only once I've blocked in all the colors and I have that in place, I go back and start refining in different places, like adding scratches, uh, uh, fine lining uh, details, uh, adding um, um, the extreme highlights, etc. So let's take a look at this process then in more in detail. So the first step, as I said, was to find some images that you want to paint. And these are two images that are on my night. So the picture of the Emperor and this uh, uh, Space Marine from the Space Marine Codex. So the first step here is to figure out what area of this image do I want to paint onto my model. In some cases it might be the entire image, but most of the time since we have limited the space, uh, we want to just take a segment of it. So we first split it down. So in this case, I just, uh, for the Emperor, just want half his face. And for the Space Marine, I just want to focus around the head. Uh, the next step is to split this into a grid, as I mentioned. Uh, for the Emperor here, just splitting the image into two pieces where I have a guiding guideline there in the middle, uh, which will allow me to help me to do uh, the sketch work uh, of, of his face. And for the Marine, I split it into 12 different uh, segments, which gives me more granularity and makes, the, uh, makes it easier to sketch uh, the, the Marine. And here then in the second step, I'm starting to transfer uh, the image uh, the, uh, through sketching onto the models. So we start with Emperor there. We see on the, on the shield that I've sketched sort of the eye, the nose, his mouth and the jawline and some other stuff onto the model. And on the right, we see for the Marine, we can see the outline of his helmet and also the shoulder guards, the, the power plant and the backpack, etc. right? But we can also see there uh, on the right more uh, closely, if you look more closely, the grid uh, that I've applied. And if I superimpose some, some lines here, you can see that those lines are there in the images. And those are actually the first things I, I painted to use that, those as a reference where to put in uh, the sketch in the rest of uh, the image. And this allows me to in a very very early stage set the the foundation for the image so i know that the perspective and and volumes and everything will be roughly correct and the and the better you can do these sketch lines the better because once you have those in place it's basically fill in the lines coloring uh, transferring colors from the image that you're copying over to your sketch going back to the original image and keep doing this until you're happy with the, the colors that you've transferred and you have the image or a copy of the image on your model. So in the next step then we start with this blocking in the colors and uh, here on for the Emperor you can see that I've come quite far in the image when this, Im uh, when this picture was taken. I've done, used layering and also some stippling to transfer both the from darker browns up to some uh, brighter highlights. Uh, on the right, on the marine there, and the helmet, I started with the helmet. Uh, it's always good to start with the main focal point and spend some more time there. So usually it's a face or whatever it might be in the image that you want to copy. And here then blocking in the red colors, some of the highlights, the, the sergeant batch, etc. Uh, just to have that in place. And something then that is important here is that I keep looking as I'm doing this onto the original image over and over and over and try to transfer the colors to the correct place in the sketch rather than having my brain trying to figure out what color should go where naturally. Um, so for instance, an example here is the yellow arrow there on the left on the emperor. You can see that there is like a little triangle of brown color just beneath his eye there. 
uh, and I've tried to copy that as closely as possible over to uh, uh, on the shield and what I figured out when painting this face in particular was that I often especially for the jawline tried to draw the, uh, the jawline the way my I thought it would should look like like what my brain thought it should look like but that ended up looking horrible so <laughs> what is better to do here if you're not artistically inclined which I'm actually not uh, is to actually just try to look at the original image see what shape and color that you're going to transfer where on your sketch and just do that like for instance that little triangle with the yellow arrow once more just transfer a, a triangle from the original image onto the, your your uh, model nothing else don't interpret what that means just draw a triangle and try to split up the original image into these small little uh, components like uh, circles and lines and triangles and shapes and in the end, if you just keep doing that over and over, you will find that in the end you will be sitting there with a very nice copy of the original image. At least that's my experience. Worth noting though uh, is that in this stage of painting, oft, most often the, the, the image um, on, the, on the armor that you're painting can look really badly for a certain period of time before you come to a stage where suddenly it looks amazing. So just be aware of that. And I'm spending some more time uh, than I expected here on these initial parts, but uh, these are the fund fundamental parts, so I think that they're very important to discuss. So I uh, hope you bear with me on that. So next, as I said, uh, you, st you should then start detailing stuff. So here on the, in the, um, uh, on the Emperor's face, I've gone uh, quite far there. Uh, once more with the details, uh, less so with the marine. Uh, but we can see here that on the, on the nose there, for instance, I've used some stippling there and that, and that technique in order to add some dots to add a gradient. Uh, over here on the marine you can see on the little skull that there is some layering going on there with some dark brown on top of the uh, bright brown that I painted in the previous step. There is also some layering here on the hoses or the, these lines and also some layering and stippling over here in the highlights. So slowly building up detail over and over. And this is what you keep doing then and then following steps. Once you sort of feel that the, the helmet is done in this step, you move on to the armor and you start by blocking in the colors. So in this case, uh, the blue armor and some of the yellow trim. And then you start refining these, adding some highlights here and there and uh, looking closely at the original image, trying to figure out where should the highlights go, where uh, do the, the different colors go, uh, ignoring the small little details for now, we'll paint those later, just focusing on, on uh, blocking in colors basically to get a good foundation for continued painting. And then we keep adding more details here, some more highlights and, uh, and details all over the armor. And once we feel happy with the overall, uh, overall image, then we can go into the very fine detailing. So here on the Emperor, I did some, some changes to the neckline, uh, the jawline, uh, added some more details here and there and highlighted a little bit more on this uh, uh, forehead and, and eyebrows and stuff. Uh, what, but on the marine, uh, we can see some larger detail work here with some weathering in terms of scratches on the armor and, uh, and the metal trim, as well as the most obvious uh, update here being the uh, bright uh, glowing eyes. Right? So, and, 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 this, and in this step, you sort of have everything in place and it's only up to you how far you want to take it in terms of detail work. So you can keep adding details over and over as, as long as you want. So let's take a quick look at this process in practice. And the way we'll do this is um, basically I, 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 I did a freehand of the image that you see down to the left which is from the uh, codex of, for the Space Wolves. And I, I painted that on a shield for one of my 
Indomitus uh, Blade God Veterans, you see here to the right. And I recorded this with a very bad webcam, thinking that that would work out well. And uh, the whole painting process took four and a half hours, and I've sped it up so it takes roughly 12 and a half minutes. And uh, if you want to uh, watch that, it will uh, start now uh, as soon as I finish uh, talking. And I will do, be doing some voiceover, and, but basically going through once more the steps that I just talked about in this initial part of the tutorial. Uh, so if you uh, feel that you want to see more, then stick around. Otherwise, I thank you so much for listening and I hope you learned something from this. And I encourage you uh, to um, uh, try this out yourself. So thank you. And for those of you sticking around, see you in a little bit. So, uh, you decided to stick around, great. So, what, we, what you see here now is me drawing the lines, uh, the line work, the grid for uh, painting this, uh, this image here to the left onto the shield for the, for the Blade of Veteran. Uh, I've added a picture of the shield when it was done, when all the little sketches and stuff uh, were added to the shield at the top here because as you can see the quality of my webcam is well horrible so uh, in future uh, tutorials if I make any I will make sure to get a, a, a much better camera but bear with me so what you see me doing now still here is just adding details trying to outline the image uh, of the the space wolf there on the on the shield adding things like his face and, and the, the axe and stuff. And now when I'm done with this, I start prepping my, my wet palette. And uh, you can see here that I've picked out a set of colors. Uh, I did this by looking at the image and then basically just putting them down in uh, blobs on the wet palette so I have them available. Um, some blues, grays, black, white, etc. And you will also notice me uh, continuously going down to the left and wiping off the, off the, uh, the brush. And uh, to do this, I actually use just normal wet wipes. And this keeps the brush tip nice and, and fresh, so I can uh, do all the little details. So what you see me doing now uh, here is uh, that I've started painting the face. And I start, in, start by blocking in some color according to my process uh, blocking in some skin color and here blocking in a little bit of the hair just to get some background around the face uh, focusing uh, on the eyes and uh, and um, nose now adding some detail work there uh, since the, i want this the face to be the main focal point i'm spending more time here trying to refine stipple in some uh, some details around the eyes and uh, and also the eyebrows and the nose etc um, also soon working with the mouth trying to get the shape correct uh, to get this uh, roaring feel and also adding uh, the teeth and such what I figured out when I did this image though was that this is this was a little bit too small of an image uh, I think uh, painting a face uh, that is this small is very difficult uh, even for I would say the most experienced painters um, it can be done of course uh, but without proper magnification and stuff which I w couldn't use <laughs> uh, when painting this uh, just because I was uh, recording everything um, it, it would be very difficult to get all the details in place but it, it can be done, but I would recommend a little bit larger uh, uh, images like, and then this, especially if you're painting a face with, uh, you know, eyes and stuff. Um, so uh, I'm continuing here, just refining the face, adding details, shading around the, the face to set the, the outline of it, adding some shadows to the hair, going back and forth, fixing with the eyes. Uh, just really trying to uh, fix the face here, uh, adding more and more highlights to the face, and now working around with the with the 
um, with his um, mouth. Uh, now moving on to the hair, adding highlights, looking closely at the reference image and transferring where different colors should be, where are the highlights in the hair, um, and trying to stick to as close as possible to uh, the reference image, uh, both in terms of shapes of the hair and also where I put the shadows and highlights just because I don't know naturally where they should be. So why not use the image that I have available there uh, as closely as possible. So uh, now moving down a little bit onto the armor, uh, adding some shadows here and in places just to outline where the arm will go, uh, painting on top of the sketch work that I did in the first step, um, uh, just to see where these, these uh, trying to separate the armor panels and just see where different parts are. Um, basically doing step, uh, th this blocking in step again, blocking in colors here, uh, first some, some uh, shadows here and then followed up there with some gray and now doing some uh, blues and, and grays for the, ha for the armor, uh, adding some gold there for the, for the wolves on his chest uh, and then working more with the gold, adding more highlights moving from a dark color up towards brighter and brighter colors. Uh, basically a mix of layering and stippling and glazing all in one, uh, but mostly layering, adding uh, brighter and brighter colors on top of the, of the uh, darker brown color. Uh, here I'm sort of breaking my own rules a little bit, uh, jumping around uh, a bit more than I should. Uh, but you can still see that I brought the armor, his chest area up to a certain standard and then moved on to uh, uh, painting a little bit on his arm and, uh, and, um, um, and the, the hand that holds the axe. Uh, then going on, on to uh, his left arm and now uh, continuing around with the, with the axe. Uh, blocking in the, the colors, uh, taking this opportunity since I was working with the brown to also block in some of the gold there on his belt and now for some reason jumping back to the armor. Uh, so uh, I'm jumping around a little bit here uh, uh, trying to figure out how to solve uh, the image in the best way possible um, and the reason why I can do this already now, basically moving on to the final step, which is refinement already, is because I have now blocked in color all over the, the, um, uh, all over the shield. So I have some natural areas now um, uh, where I can add more colors use layering to refine highlights and add shadows, etc. Uh, so I've sort of gone past this initial stage where we're just blocking in colors. So it's all about refinement from now on. And uh, even though I would recommend maybe working with one area at a time, uh, some images like this lend themselves to doing refinement all over. Uh, so you could even this stage maybe go back to the face and I think I do so in some, uh, at some point here, add some little details around his hairline and so on. Uh, but mainly uh, I try to focus on one area at a time uh, normally when I do these types of paintings. So now I'm, I'm just continuing here, adding more and more highlights, working here on the axe, uh, adding some uh, brighter colors and textures to the axe handle um, and uh, trying to get that bronze effect. Uh, same thing here now, adding the, the um, Space Wolf um, logo or a hint of it there on the pauldron adding the yellow color there, adding more highlights, bright, really brightening up the gold there on his chest in order to get a nice non-metallic metal effect. Same thing here on the, uh, on the, on the uh, belt and uh, so on. 
Um, continuing here, adding more details to the arm, uh, more shadow work, moving back and forth with this little pencil, uh, mixing colors on the, on the wet palette, looking closely at the reference image and then going into the shield and, and trying to add the colors in the right place, adding shadows, adding highlights uh, wherever necessary. Um, but as I said, really trying to break the original image down into, uh, into uh, well, not symbols, but into shapes, uh, circles, lines, squares, and trying to transfer those to the right place on, on the image, uh, or around the shield rather. Uh, here, for instance, I noticed that the shape of his uh, of his shin was a little bit uh, strange, so I went back there and added a little bit of color and refined it. Same thing here with the she axe uh, with axe, um, adding highlights there by glazing in a little bit brighter color. Same thing there on the on the um, um, on the belt, etc. So continuously using these different techniques that I mentioned earlier in the tutorial, the layering, stippling and, and glazing, uh, looking closely at the reference image continuously, moving back and forth and just adding details all over. Um, once more, I, I apologize for the poor quality and I will rectify that in the future. Um, but I'm hoping that you sort of get the gist of what's going on here anyways, where uh, me, I am basically sitting there, I look at my computer, look at the reference image, try to find uh, different shapes, pick a color uh, for that shape, move over to the uh, shield and, and paint it there. Uh, something that I should have mentioned earlier also is uh, a little bit of how I've prepared the shield. Um, the shield is here mounted on a piece of paper it could be uh, uh, directly on the on the table but i did that for the video purposes but anywho it's mounted on on uh, some blue tack uh, just to keep the shield steady and uh, this means that the shield is always in one place and it's close to the table so i can have nice support for my hand uh, to lean it against the table and you will notice there also that i keep using my left hand a sort of like a, a, a stand for my right hand uh, to keep it extra stable and I actually uh, didn't know that I was using my left hand like this before I watched the video but it seems that I, I keep using my left hand as a, um, like a support that I can to move my right hand around a little bit in a stable way whilst my wrist on the, uh, my right hand is doing the majority of the line work and pencil work and so on. But I really recommend mounting the thing that you're painting like this so it's nice and firm and stable on the table so you have nice support with your hand to uh, do the painting, especially for the very fine details. And now we're uh, reaching the end here of uh, the, the freehand work. So I will uh, thank you all for watching and I will end off here with some images again of the final result. Thank you for watching, uh, I hope you learned something, bye bye.